Folks at home, welcome back to the farm. In case you missed the last video, we bought an 80 acre farm and we are currently right in the middle of a peanut harvest. Folks, look at how many peanuts are in here. The farmers just came through, dug the peanuts. What they basically do is they just flip them over. They'll let them sit here for a couple days and dry out. You can see they're pretty dry right now. And then they'll come back through with some equipment and harvest them and get rid of all that peanut hay. But look, at how many peanuts that is what you call peanuts for days so all the way to that tree line over there and i think it's safe to say there's definitely millions and millions of peanuts on this property so we're going to take a quick look at how the farmers harvest the peanuts and then we're going to talk about planting some deer fields back in the back and then our lake build that's going to go right back in this area so let's check out some drone footage of the peanut harvest So basically what you're seeing here is the tractor is scooping up the peanuts and separating it from the vine or what some people call peanut hay. And it's storing the peanuts in the hopper on top of the tractor and, and it's shredding up the hay and spitting it out the back. And you guys probably guessed it, with this many peanuts on the farm, eventually those hoppers get full. That's why they have this special vehicle that comes around and they can easily dump all the peanuts into a holding container. All right folks, we got all the seed out here at the disc. We got Farmer Liz. What do you think? Got my sister Lauren. All right, we got Liz on the tractor. I've been on the spreader. We just put out 40 bags of triple 13 fertilizer, and I'm gonna show you what we're going in with. So since this is a new piece of property, we're not 100% sure what the deer like. We're gonna do a little test solution this year. Four different types of seed and peas. Starting off, this is the Alabama blend. WMS makes it. Next up, we got another WMS product, winter peas. We're gonna do about three acres of the Alabama blend, three acres of peas, and next is rye grain. People also call it cereal rye. This is a bruisey, and this is different than the rye grass we're planting. It's a lot more nutritional for deer than just standard rye grass. So rye grain if you're planting food plots. And then last up is the Rackmaster Deluxe Fall blend. This is the WMS Alabama blend. It's got a lot of different things, including the peas in it. And the ATV spreader's been doing a pretty good job so far. I'll leave a link down in the description in case you guys are interested. It holds one 50 pound sack perfectly of that. This is the Rackmaster Deluxe Fall Deer Mix. It's got that blue tint to it. That's pretty cool. And next up, we got the winter peas. And last up, the uh, bruisey rye grain. And the good thing about this is you don't even have to till the land. You can throw it out. Don't have to disc it in very very easy and simple to plant last one feels good it's a hot day out here so now let's take a look at everything from an overhead view we got the lake down on the bottom left we'll talk more on that design later on in the video and we have the wms alabama blend right along the wood line as you're going up and you can see the one place that i put the rye grain it's a little bottom and there's a wet area right there and i really wanted to put that grain there so we didn't have to till that wet land. And I like the spot where the peas are out in the middle. From what I've heard, deer are gonna mow down the peas. So right out in the middle where you can see all the deer is a perfect location for me. And last but not least, we have the Rackmaster. That's that blue seed just south of the peas. Now let's talk about the pond for just a second. I'm gonna do a full video here in the next month or so because there's so many details that are included in a pond build. But we basically had the pond completely designed. It was gonna be right at five acres. We spent most of our time on designing the dam and emergency spillway, and then Hurricane Sally came through and that hurt us in two different ways. First off, a lot of the people around here that build ponds are now using their heavy machinery and equipment on helping people recover from the hurricane. There's a lot of trees down. That was a little bit of a setback. 
The second thing that happened is Sally brought a hundred year flood. And that just means that on average, the amount of rainfall we got when Sally came only happens once every hundred years. So most people design their lake to withstand 25 to 50 years. Well, right after Sally came and I saw all that rainfall come through, I decided to redesign our emergency spillway so that it would handle those hundred year rainfalls. And that hopefully if that happened again, it wouldn't destroy our dam and ruin our pond. So more on all of that in an upcoming video. What's he doing up there? He's cutting the lambs. Cutting the lambs, you old country girl. All right, you can see he got the transformer installed. We got the temporary power pole set up. A big project coming up that's gonna be using that. More to come on that in a future video, but it's nice to have power on the property. All right, it's been a little while since we've been out here to the backyard pond, but we finally recovered from all the hurricane damage. We're just now getting the fence rebuilt. But the pond's looking great, and today we're going to be getting a thousand golden shiners and dropping them in, doing a little feeding action. So let's see who we can see. We got a couple of the bluegills out. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull Cloud out of his cave. Here's a good look at our biggest bass, Bonnie, and our biggest bluegill, Jekyll, and they are beefing up for the winter time, so let's go ahead and roll a feeding clip. Time to feed our boy Moby. He looks hungry tonight. Ooh. Man, still aggressive as ever. All right, Liz said that she found a couple of really big shiners on that last bunch as he's sitting there spitting out the rocks. So tomorrow, Moby, you can get a couple of really big ones.
All right, folks, time for a peanut bowl. The farmer left behind just a cluster or two, but look at how many peanuts you can get out of just that much. So now we're gonna show you our famous Bama Bass peanut recipe. All right, extremely simple recipe. First, rinse the peanuts off, pour them in a big pot, take plain Morton salt, And here's a secret ingredient. We're gonna go in with some chili peppers. This adds a little bit of spice, but it will definitely make the best boiled peanuts you're gonna have. About one and a half handfuls. Stir everything up, and I'm gonna boil them on medium to medium high heat for about one to two hours. And what you wanna do is sample the peanuts, and as soon as one of them starts, they're gonna start off a little hard. As soon as they start to soften up, you wanna stop it. And the key to a peanut bowl is, after you cut the heat off, let them soak for about an hour and that'll soak all that salt and heat into the peanut. Let me tell you folks, it's delicious. Now let's take a look and see what kind of photos we've gotten from the game cameras on the farm. First up, this is Foxy. It's kind of like our pet fox squirrel that comes out almost every day. Next up, we got a spike walking through eating peanuts during the middle of the day. And we got the farmer coming in and flipping the peanuts over and a random black cat out in the middle of nowhere. This is that field at the very northeast end of the property that I cut and put the WMS Alabama blend. The deer are definitely starting to flock to that area. And some young bucks out in that same field late at night and we even got a couple of them fighting. And a random squirrel midair. Gotta love those photos. All right folks, that's gonna wrap up this video. Make sure to subscribe so you can follow along with all these adventures coming up with the new farm. And also leave comments down below on anything you'd like to see us add out there in the future. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>